would have been considered monumental had it been passed over a few weeks or months. But in our fourth story, once again, this Congress and this president defy the odds. Just hours after President Obama signs a repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Congress ratifies the START nuclear arms treaty, followed by legislation for the 9-11 first responders. The president, holding a news conference before heading off to Hawaii for the holidays, measured and thoughtful as per usual, but nonetheless, a hard-earned victory lap. A lot of folks in this town predicted that after the midterm elections, Washington would be headed for more partisanship and more gridlock. And instead, this has been a season of progress for the American people. Today, a cap to the season of progress. Start ratified with the help of 13 Republicans. The 9-11 first responders bill followed with unanimous consent. More on that later in the hour. And so um, one thing I hope people have seen during this uh, lame duck, I am persistent. I am persistent. I, you know, if I believe in something strongly, I stay on it. Mr. Obama not surprisingly scoring high marks in the latest CNN poll. 59% approve of his efforts to work across the aisle. Of course, people always approve that. <laughs> Only 28% believed Republicans were trying to work with the president. Nevertheless, Mr. Obama was able to score crucial Republican support for key legislation, a feat not to be overlooked. I think it's fair to say that this has been the most productive post-election period we've had in decades. And it comes on the heels of the most productive two years that we've had in generations. While the past two years may have seemed like a never-ending GOP obstructionist dead zone, while wars continue to rage across continents with little oversight or plan for withdrawal, and while Congress remains infected with an improper dependence on big money and entrenched interests, this has probably been the most productive Congress since the days of the Great Society in the 1960s. 32 million Americans got health insurance, Get it soon? A sweeping attempt to rein in Wall Street's worst abuses, new hate crimes legislation, credit card reform, student loan reform, equal pay for equal work, General Motors brought back from the dead, a recovery act that saved the country from abject economic Armageddon, creating and saving jobs across the 50 states. It also included billions for anti-poverty programs, the largest investment in clean energy on record, and tax cuts for working families. This Congress brought us the most expansive food safety bill since the 1930s. It also confirmed two female Supreme Court justices, including the first Hispanic to serve. And that's just a list of partial, partial list of accomplishments. So how do the president's opponents feel about all this? Ask Republican Jeff Sessions. His opinion on the 111th Congress, he's unequivocal. I think it was a disaster. Time now to call on Washington Post columnist and senior fellow at the Brookings Institution, E.J. Dion. Good evening, E.J. How you doing? Good to be with you. Happy holidays, Happy Chris. holidays. So, um, well, I, here, here's my big question. Why did this all happen in this lame duck Congress? I'm still, I asked for Howard Feynman this the other night. I'm still trying to work towards like a good explanatory theoretical model <laughs> that, that can tell me why these outcomes were produced in such rapid succession. Toward a theoretical model of a duck. Um, you, the, you know, first, I think the first thing that happened is Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi made a decision, which is they were going to use their majority, which expires, uh, that full Democratic control expires on January 3rd. A lot of people said, oh, you can't get much done. We lost the election. Let's do some housekeeping and go home. They said no. They realized it was like having one of those gift cards that expires in 12 months and you better use it. And so that was the first decision. On the START Treaty, President Obama had a deep commitment to this, and he really uh, reached outside the administration, got all those Republican secretaries of state to support it, and he had a base of Republican support to work with. On the tax cut, in all honesty, it's not really hard for Congress to give to away $858 billion, yes. you know, a little bit for Republican priorities, tax cuts for the rich, a little for Democratic priorities. And then you had two other things. You had the Don't Ask Hotel, where I think what's really important is that's become a popular position. Yes. And there were a lot of moderate Republicans who realized that their moderate credentials wouldn't be any good if they opposed it. And then finally they were shamed into, uh, uh, the Republicans were shamed into ending their obstruction of the help for the 9-11 responders. And Fox News, hate to say that on this network, probably played a role along with John Stewart. 
specifically Shep Smith. I, I, you know, yeah. so you're not giving me a nice, neat, you know, uh, cable-ready monocausal theory of this. But, but I want. I don't. I, I don't think there is one. Right. And <laughs> I, I think a lot. Of, I think you're right. A lot of things got sort of passed at different times due to different contingencies. But to sort of step back for a second as we look at these two years, what is your sense of these two years? Because I, I have my own kind of feelings about what, what's our successes and what are failures. How would you? characterize this two years of the both the Obama administration and the Democratic Congress, which was pretty unprecedented. It was an enormous amount of achievement. They came in, they could have played it safer. They said, no, we're not going to get this shot again and we're going to take some chances. Where I would fault them is that they did not, and the president did not, make a consistent case for why he wanted to move the country in a certain direction. So they never adequately sold the health care bill. They never really explained to people why the stimulus was so important. He's got to get much better at making a case. He's really good at dealing dealing with legislation and getting it through. They got to spend 2 years explaining where they want to move the country now. Yeah, and I think I think that the real issue here I think is this, these two lenses I think for for viewing what's going on. It seems to me like this Congress and the president on domestic policy have done about as well as you could possibly do within the system as currently constituted, but the system itself seems badly badly broken and corrupt to me. Well, if you could abolish, if I could abolish the Senate, I would. I mean, it's not only do you have uh, now the permanent filibuster, but it is a deeply unrepresentative body. When you look at the biggest state and the smallest state, a ratio of 68 to 1, there's something fundamentally wrong. So that's true, plus the money system, which you mentioned yes. uh, in your uh, setup piece. But if you keep pushing and you keep pushing and you actually persuade people, you can still get things done even within the framework of this very messed up system. I hope they get at some reform in the next time around. I'd still love them to pass the Disclose Act, but there doesn't seem to be any chance of that. Or the Fair Elections Act from your yes. lips uh, to Barack Obama's <laughs> ears. E.J. Dion of the Washington Post, thanks for your time and happy holidays. Great to be with you.